what's up everybody and welcome back we have a new switch 2 update video that could shed light on exactly what the switch 2 gpu is based on and we have proof to back it up based on a verified leak that we don't see too often and this was verified by verge that this information could actually be correct now of course take this with a grain of salt but there is a very good reason why i am covering this because of the information that sheds light on with the dock and what the gpu could actually be i'm very excited about this so if you do enjoy this content please hit the like button and we will get started now first of all we have this new information being shared by verge about the Nintendo Switch 2 and its dock as described by the mysterious Reddit leaker. And his name is Next Handheld. Now, they have reason to believe that the information that they're claiming is in fact correct. If we take a look at their posts that they have, they discuss that Next Handheld has seen two photos of the Switch 2 dock and one photo of the inside of the possible Switch 2 controller. And they go on to talk about how the Switch 2 We'll have new Joy-Cons that will eliminate the Joy-Con drift, basically with like the Hall effect that we actually talked about earlier this year because Nintendo did actually have a patent that discussed having these Hall effect type analog sticks for possible new Joy-Cons for Switch 2. So that information kind of was already discussed and kind of figured out, but it is interesting to see that this individual has pretty much backed this up with their own information on Reddit. And they also talked about the final name of the console will in fact be Switch 2, we already knew that. And they went into more detail about the Nintendo Switch 2 dock, about having multiple different types of connections with USB-A and USB-C, and more details on how the magnetic Joy-Cons will connect to the Switch. And then going into the information about the dock and that question that many people always talk about when we talk about the Switch 2 dock is that, will the Switch 2 ever have this SCD or supplemental computing device that they can actually add more power to the console and I've always kind of backed off on that ever since the original patent for the Nintendo NX came out and we discussed it way back in 2015. Ever since that time it seems less and less likely Nintendo would actually use an SCD for a Switch 2. Even though it is theoretically possible it seems more likely to me at least that they would release revisions or even more powerful versions of their own consoles later or just simply do what they did with the switch one and release the next generation offering without doing that but either way this new dock reportedly from this information is not going to be a dock that gives the switch two extra power but it's going to allow the switch two just like the switch one to overclock and produce better graphics and higher resolutions on your tv screen and according to this information it is quite a bit more power hungry than the switch one dock was and you may or may not know this but the original switch one the dock was 39 watts and the switch itself the original switch was 18 watts so when the console was docked it was getting basically over doubled of what it could do when it's playing on your tv now for the switch 2 the information brings out here that the switch 2 dock will be rated for 60 watts tdp and switch 2 itself will be 45 watts tdp which for the Switch 2 at least is far more power hungry than the 18 watts for the Switch 1. So that goes to show that the Switch 2, of course, if this is correct, which The Verge seems to have corroborated and they are definitely a big site and trustworthy source. Other sites like VGC has picked up on this and also kind of backed this up. So this information could be seen as a very, very likely or strong rumor here. And that's why I'm covering it. It's not just some random 4chan post, basically. This is actually something that is being backed up by respectable sites. And a lot of people who have covered this so far have not really looked into this more closely. And that's what we're going to do today. Because there's some very interesting tie-ins to what the actual GPU that the Nintendo Switch 2 could be based on due to this information of the dock and the TDP of the Switch 2 itself. And to figure this out, we have to go back to 2023 with this article from Digital Foundry. Now, they covered the projected T239 SoC for the Switch 2, and back then they talked about the leaked specs from this chip. This is a real chip, and where it could lie in terms of performance versus what Nvidia was offering with mobile processors and dedicated GPUs for PCs. 
And they were kind of lining up with an NVIDIA RTX 2050 for a gigabyte version because of the bandwidth was more aligned with what that GPU was offering. However, times have changed. And when you look at the new leak from Foxconn that we talked about back in September, which we detailed very closely here, the leak from that Foxconn information talked about how the Switch 2 would have LPDDR5X memory and the fastest version of it. Whereas back with Digital Foundry, they were talking about 128-bit bandwidth with LPDDR5, not 5X. And LPDDR5X is 30% faster than LPDDR5, which is a decent upgrade, of course, but it's not like a gigantic game changer. However, it just it goes to show that this information is a little bit outdated and the new information looks like the Switch 2 has in fact had a little bit of an upgrade. But either way, the original spec leak for this projected T239 chip was 1536 CUDA cores, which is 12 SMs because Nvidia clusters their chips into different sections for their CUDA cores. The total CUDA core count is 1536 for this chip versus the Nvidia RTX 2050 at four gigabytes with 2048 CUDA cores, but it's only on a 64-bit GDDR6 memory bus. And even the memory bandwidth is slower at 96 gigabytes. So it's kind of like in a no man's land here. However, the interesting thing is, is that they kind of ruled out the possibility of the NVIDIA RTX 3050, which was being used for laptop cards, which I never understood why they did that because the RTX 3050 four gigabyte version is actually really close to what the T239 chip would be. And either way, these different GPUs from NVIDIA all have more CUDA cores than the rumored Switch 2 SoC. But it seems like they're going for the lowest ballpark figure here due to there just not being a chip that matched this one-to-one. -one. However, there's a very interesting thing here. Now that we see this now verified information that the Switch 2 dock will be 60 watts and the Switch 2 itself will be 45 watts, this is very interesting now because if you look at the RTX 3050 and the specs, now this is the mobile version, which is only four gigabytes. And we already know the Switch 2 is gonna have 12 gigabytes of system memory with likely 10 gigabytes or 10.5 gigabytes for games. It's gonna be a lot better for the memory side of it, which is very, very important. And even though LPDDR5X is slower than GDDR6, it's gonna have a lot more of it, which will more than make up for that difference by having at least six gigabytes more RAM than the 3050 mobile version. Now, the interesting thing about the 3050, if you look at it here, here's the die diagram of it. This was a laptop GPU and it's based on Ampere and it was eight nanometers, just like the original rumored version of the T239 chip, which we've discussed at length is that many people do believe that this chip will now be four nanometers. And if it is, it will more than make up for a lot of these things, but we'll dive into that in just a second here. However, this RTX 3050 at eight nanometers had a base clock of just over a thousand megahertz or one gigahertz and a boost clock, which was what would be running during gaming was 1.3 gigahertz and due to having 2048 CUDA cores when you did the math this would actually add up to 5.5 teraflops which would be a decent amount more powerful than the rumored average of the switch 2 which is around four teraflops is what people are talking about here for this console and does actually seem the most likely now here's another interesting thing about this chip is that the TDP for the RTX 3050 mobile edition 4 gigabyte version is in fact 45 watts. And that is an exact match for this rumored rated wattage of the Switch 2 at 45 watts. But the difference is the Switch 2 dock is going to be at 60 watts. So if this is true, theoretically the Switch 2 could actually be overclocking itself closer to 60 watts while it's docked. Obviously, you need to account for the other parts of the system as well. But overall, I would say if it's clocking 15 watts above what the Switch 2 is at 45 watts, then it's gonna be making up for anything extra that's running. And it's gonna be basically pumping out better high fidelity graphics with that extra power. But getting back to the 3050. Now, if we apply the same logic to the Switch 2, obviously this would not work 
for a portable console. So why on earth would the Switch 2 then have 45 watts unless this was in fact running on a 4 nanometer process and it could actually clock down much greater in portable mode and then this would be a more of a maximum range it could reach and then the dock could help it as well. This would account for a lot if the Switch 2 was in fact 4 nanometers instead of 8 nanometers, it would generate a lot less heat and it would be smaller and it would make more sense for a portable. This was developed for an output for a portable device right here, but this was for laptops. Laptops do generate a lot more heat and more power consumption than a portable device like the Nintendo Switch ever would. So this is very interesting that it would actually be verified rumor here that the switch is rated for 45 watts while it docks at 60 watts. So keeping that in mind, the reason for these TDP numbers is so these chips can reach their intended targets for performance, which should be 5.5 teraflops. So if we do some math here and take a look, for example, at the RTX 3060, it's rated at 12.74 teraflops. FP32 for its dedicated graphics cards for standalone PCs, not laptops. This is the, the real deal here. Obviously, we don't think the Switch 2 is going to be ever close to this. However, the math that they did was actually very correct. If you can do the math, if you know anything about how to calculate teraflops, we'll kind of go over it here for you. Since Ampere is well known and the actual Switch 2 rumored architecture for the chip they're using, Ampere by Nvidia, it's well known how it is calculated by doing some simple math with the clock speeds and the CUDA cores. So how to figure this out, 12.74 teraflops. What you do is, is that you multiply the shading union, so which is the CUDA cores, 3,584. You multiply that by the boost clock, which would be 1,777. Do that. And then you times that by two after that, because you're dealing with FP32, the float point, you times that by two and you get your 12.74 teraflops. It's 12737 and you round that up to, you know, 74 basically. So 12.74 teraflops is the correct number for the RTX 3060. Now you do the same math for the Nintendo Switch, rumored specs, Basically, you got the 1536 CUDA cores, right? This is where it gets interesting. So we have 1536 times, and then we have to do an estimated ballpark figure for the clock speed. And if we go by the range of the RTX 3050, since the watts are very similar here to what the Switch 2 is rated at, 1343 megahertz, but this is at eight nanometers, right? But if we do that here for the Switch 2, so times 1343, and then we times that by two, what do we get? We get 4.1 teraflops, basically, which would be right in line for what the Switch 2 is rumored to be. Yet again, though, this eight nanometers here would not make sense, as many have pointed out. So if it is running at four nanometers, and still pulling in these clock speeds and getting this performance, that would make a lot more sense. And it would actually be able to down clock better while on the go to generate less power consumption, perhaps being like two teraflops while it's in handheld mode. That would make a lot more sense. And that would line up perfectly with something like the Xbox Series S. And as we know, that console can run pretty much all the new games. Yes, it wouldn't quite be as big for performance on the teraflop side as the RTX 3050 Mobile Edition, but we gotta remember here, this is designed for laptops and it's only four gigabytes. It's a different type of chip, but it's also the same type of chip too that the Switch 2 theoretically looks like it could be using. And it's the same power draw and it's gonna have around the same clock speeds as well. And I have taken a look at some games that are running on those laptops with the 3050 four gigabyte mobile edition. And while it's not super great, if you're a PC enthusiast, it can run games like Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, even with no DLSS and low to medium settings at decent frame rates. But when you add things like DLSS and more memory like the Switch 2 will have than that older chip, 
then you're going to have things that run a lot better, something more in line possibly like a 3050 Ti or even an RTX 3050 Standard Edition which has 8GB of VRAM instead of 4. So taking all this into consideration, it looks like we may actually have a Nintendo Switch 2 that will be in the ballpark range or close to an RTX 3050 graphics card even better possibly than the RTX 3050 mobile edition due to the memory constraints of that mobile chip being alleviated by the Switch 2's much greater memory capacity. So that's something to consider. I think it's really really cool information though and it ties in very closely because of that Switch 2 dock having a much greater power range for what they need for power consumption for the Switch 2 to reach certain performance levels. And those certain performance levels, you gotta think, are actually gonna be something that is gonna be able to run new games. So in order to do that, you gotta have a lot more power than the Nintendo Switch 1 did, including the actual Switch 2 handheld itself. It's gonna be quite a bit more powerful as far as actual watts are concerned than the Switch 1. Switch 1 was only 18 watts maximum TDP. Switch 2, it looks like it's going to be 45 watts maximum. That is quite a bit more juice under the hood there. So I'm really excited to see Nintendo reveal this console soon. Will we have something on par with something like an RTX 3050? Hey, it actually looks like this could be a realistic possibility, guys. So yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Are you excited for Switch 2 and the potential? I myself, as you know, I'm a PC enthusiast. I have the best PC stuff on the market. I play all the new latest and greatest games, but I'm really excited for Switch 2 because this is the type of stuff that actually is more interesting, getting more bang for your buck for something that is lower spec. That is something that's always fascinated me about Nintendo, how they design their consoles and how they always seem to make them punch up above their weight by quite a bit. And the Switch 2 looks like it's going to continue that trend. But the way they're going to make this console better looks to be very, very interesting versus how they did in the past. Because true to Nintendo's form, they appear to be using the latest and greatest in certain AI upscaling like DLSS and using a little bit older chips from NVIDIA, but using other aspects to get more bang for your buck, like using better memory, for example. And from the looks of it, it's going to be something very, very exciting. So I can't wait to see. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and I'll talk to you very soon in the next one. Have a great day.